there is actually different ways of getting a model into MATLAB. You can have a command line uh, function that sort of imports this uh, model into your MATLAB workspace such that you can operate on it. But being at an early stage of the course, we don't want to do that. We want to have a nice graphical user interface. Yep. And this starts our second part. Uh, it's the exercise called SimBiology. Okay. So this, the way to start it is to type SimBiology. Okay, that's easy. Uh, do you know Sim. how to type it? Yes, I know how to type it. <laughs> Biology. SimBiology, okay. S-I-M. So that's for simulate and then biology just as the word it is. Enter. Pressing enter should open up a graphical user interface. Okay. So do you think there's a way of increasing the font under the preferences? Maybe it will make it nicer for the people who haven't got a big screen. Under font, in the preferences under font, uh, just try to set that. Uh. <laughs> mm -hmm. That worked for the MATLAB command window, but not for this interface here. So we have it all very big now there, but not okay. bigger here. I'll, be, I'll try and be clear on what buttons okay. are pressing. Okay, so we have to be clear about where we are clicking for those who have small screens. And we should advise you uh, to make as much space as possible for your go to training window. In, if you uh, go with the mouse uh, to the corner of this uh, window, you can expand it. It should be working and to have our screen visible as large as possible on your screen. So we try to be precise. Now the first thing is to import. So we find the import function. This is the add model. Um, uh, among the options here in that in that toolbar up there, there's one that's called add model. It should take a while to familiarize yourself with it. Add model is where we have the import possibility. So if you just click on that, it will give you some options. And what we want to do now, because we have it on the desktop, we want to have it from a local file. Okay, so, so the option here is? And the third option down for me is load model from file. Load model from file. So if you click on that one, it will give you the option to search, to navigate uh, your computer, browse through that. And if, as we have it here, it's already on the desktop, it should show up in black font, such that it's uh, one of the preferred formats that uh, Symbology is prepared to read directly. Okay. Because it's in this markup language, yes, it's in this preferred format. We can see the name. So and as we said before, it's got a .xml extension. So and the name of the file that we, we have is um, the biomodel ID. So uh, it should be yes. easy to find the right file. So if we click on open, model will be imported as a whole. And you can see not only will it be imported, but all relevant information about the components of the model, which is the reactions being modeled, the parameters that enter the reactions, and the metabolites that enter the reaction is directly displayed in this first graphical user interface. Okay. So we might have a look at this a few uh, in a few minutes. An important thing to remember is that the initial numerical values for each species and the parameters. If you just scroll down at the bottom a little bit, the values of the parameters with that you can see listed here can also be changed. If you click on the right position where the numbers are, and we'll need that for later, right? So these numbers, if you click on that corresponding box, you have the option to change that number. It means you modify that model in terms of giving it another parameter value, making it quantitatively different. Right, but when we actually want to run it, we need to open a second user interface. Okay. Now, where would you look for that? So on this bar at the top again. Uh, look at the toolbar on the top. And a simulation is defined in Symbiology as a task. So add task. So uh, about, about in the middle of my toolbar is um, an add task um, button. 
So click that one. Right, click that one, see the options that are there. Okay. And naturally, one of the choices, it's actually the top choice, is called Simulate Model. So if you can find that toolbar at the top of Add Task, you can find the option Simulate Model. And this is precisely what we are going to do first. Okay. So if you select this now, which is a bit confusing in the first place, we'll open a second user interface. And if we put that in the middle of our screen, then this is what we are going to work with first. Okay. So we're going to try to do a simulation according to what is in the materials. So with the parameters that were set originally in the in the data file. And we start by reproducing the model in the way that it is set up for us. And as I've mentioned, the model, because it's curated, it has been set up to reproduce one of the figures or one of the part of one of the figures in the paper by Nielsen from 1998. And so that's what we want to see first, a simulation that gives us an idea of how all these metabolites that have been included here in this glycolytic pathway, how they evolve over time under reactions that are known from literature. So we can see um, that on the left side of this graphical user phase for the simulation, there's uh, a couple of sections. Uh, the first is called description, the second is called model, and each of them has a plus sign next to it, which is where you can expand it. So okay. if you use the plus, uh, uh, yeah, model? if you start with model maybe, so it tells you it's the Nielsen 1998 glycolysis model and you prepare the model for accelerated simulation is something that we don't need. So maybe you just hide this one again by clicking on it, then go to the first task and yes, you have already expanded it. So this is something that we need because any simulation we need to tell the computer or the function that executes the simulation, for what period of time do you want that simulation to run? So I need to define the start point and the end point, or the period of time in the length of units. So what we can do here is choose, uh, rather than saying the preset simulation settings, we choose our own individual settings by clicking on that second option where we have use a stop time that is specific to this task. And if you allow me for just a short interruption, uh, one of uh, the uh, trainees said he cannot get the same interface when I press the simulate model. So yes, so there's a thing. Uh, you might not have the interface looking the same depending on the version of MATLAB that you are using. So what we, uh, we can recommend is that the symbology environment is still the same in all of these optional menus that we have here. So what you go for, you have import model. So the upload for the model, import from a local file will still be there. And in that uh, same toolbar, you look for task. And if you find the task menu under task, there will be set up a simulation or just simulation. So this is the way to get to an environment that looks similar to this, if not exactly the same as this, because that, as I said, depends on the version of MATLAB that you are using. What is the same in all versions is that the task stop time that we have highlighted now, um, we want to change the amount of time that is running here. So from the materials, we see that we want to have 600 time units and actually the unit that is taken here from the SBML model is seconds, whereas in the original paper, if you read it carefully, it's minutes. So we don't need to address this, but the simulation, if you want to refer to the experimental data, will be on the order of minutes. This is a problem with the okay. curated file. Right. So then a couple of things we don't need. We then want to go to plots. Okay, so no plots are being generated when the task completes running. That doesn't right. sound right. That doesn't really sound right. So if you expand on it, we have the option to actually see something. And what you can see, yes, it's actually preset. We are going to see simulation results. And furthermore, 
uh, in the right part of the thing under y, yes, somewhere in the middle, yep. we can see that it's going to plot all of the variables. So there's nothing really to worry about. The simulation is preset such that uh, without further ado, we are going to see all of the variables. And as you can see by that small icon in the center, we're going to see a time series. Okay, that means okay. the output will be metabolite on the vertical axis and the horizontal axis will be time. Uh, but I can see we've not checked this box, generate plots after run. Is that the one we want to check? Um, we can generate a plot after the run. That means the simulation will just be finished and then plotted, or we can see what it's going to do during the simulation. Uh, both is possible. Okay. I think we just may give it a try. We just let it run as it is, assuming that everything else is preset as we are pretending to do, because of course I have checked it before, but uh, let's see what happens if we are beginners. So at the top in the toolbar is a green button which says run. Uh, it might have been called simulate in a previous version, but it's now called run. It's a green toolbar. Clicking on run means MATLAB uh, is supposed to execute a simulation that starts model at time zero, simulates it for 600 time units of that, and will plot all the metabolites as a function of time. So let's see if it works. By clicking run, it takes a few seconds, huh? and we can actually see that the Output is being plotted in the same window in this case, and depending on the version of MATLAB you have, it might have opened in a separate window. If it hasn't, um, a thing to do is to actually click Generate Plots after the run, uh, which actually speeds up the process because there's no plotting during the simulation. And if we just run it again, we can see the same thing again, being performed very quickly. But in addition to having seen what is going on during the simulation, we get something that we are going to use extensively in the future, namely the graphical user face for plots. So we have a nice colorful plot, in this output in a way that we can handle because we can click on the small icon here and have it interactively available if I just adjust it such that you can better see what we have here. The actual output showing, what do we see? If we see the 600 minutes, uh, which is obviously six hours of, of model simulations and the different states, uh, with the legend, we can see that all the metabolites simulated are also being displayed. And we'll need to figure, figure out a little bit which is which. So blue seems to be either product or NADH. I think just by clicking clicking on, on P, you can see which one it actually is because it then highlights it with figures. And if you click on the NADH and the one below it, I don't really see that selected. Can you do it again? Go to it. It's all very, it's, um, it's this green line. Yeah, here. it has the markers on it, so we would need to um, adjust that a little bit, maybe the alcohol, see the alcohol, last but one. Ah, so that's, that's, the, that's the line, that's, that's the big the, line. That's the big curve on the top. So the product of this, of this model simulation is that we have a lot of alcohol produced as a result of this glycolysis, and that's the top line. If we take that away, we can see what the others are doing. And if we can take that away, it's actually MATLAB automatically resizes the vertical scale, and we can see in a little bit more detail what the others are doing. So um, we don't want to go into this too much because we want to encourage you here to now start and explore this environment. Once you have it running, uh, we can then, of course, look into each of these features that the graphical user interface offers us and try to explore it further and try to get familiar with it. Uh, we will do, however, one additional simulation. Of course, if you do play around with symbiology uh, and uh, you don't know what's happened, you can get your original model back just by um, loading that XP XML file again um, from the start. It won't have saved back to that um, model unless you explicitly tell it to.
Okay, yeah, that's a, for the beginner, it's a good thing. If you don't want to read all the tutorials to tell you how to do it, it's the easier way. Uh, before we close this window, maybe let's just have a description of what we are seeing here. Uh, what we see that according to this model, uh, glycolytic uh, pathway shows oscillatory behavior in many, but not all of its components. So most of its components, as we can see here, apart from this pep thing in the middle, uh, seem to have oscillatory behavior, means there's a prediction of concentration going up and down over time. It's initially transient, so it levels it, so it adjusts to some levels, but after it has reached these levels at about second 300, from time 300 on, it's fairly stable. So there would be something like a steady state, but it's not a true steady state in the sense that concentration is not changing, but that it's oscillating around the same mean. And this has been observed experimentally and has puzzled the researchers for, for many years. But I think via modeling, we now understand why this is happening. So let's do one modification, something that you're supposed to do for the assignment, change a parameter and run the simulation again. How do we do that? Well, our parameters are in the other window, the original symbiology right. window that we have. If opened. we have the other window, well, let's go back to that window. Uh, let's find a parameter that has to do with the flow. Let's see all of the parameters if you just scroll. Okay, so so the, the bottom of the, the window. Um, so we have all the parameters listed and you can see there's a large number. And the one thing that we're going to select is the flow. Uh, the main reason being that this is an easily experimentally approachable parameter because flow is something in an open stirred tank reactor, which is what we are having here. We have a glycolytic extract, we're not having we have an open reactor where there's a flow through environment which can adapt to a stable steady state or stable oscillations. The flow rate is something that just means the rate with which the pumps work. So let's just make some random changes. Let's just make it 10 times as big. So it's been now 0.011. Let's make it 0.11. So that's uh, about tenfold much higher flow rate, which means we have a higher supply of the um, upstream metabolite, which is glucose, or which we assume to be a six carbon sugar here. And if we just click on this after we have changed a number, this parameter is stored internally. So the change has taken place internally. MATLAB knows that this value has changed now. And what we can do, we can go right back away to the simulation, to the task that we are doing, rerun the same task just by clicking run. Okay. So if we do that, we can see that having selected different parameter value, what's the output? Uh, so we lose our oscillations completely. Um, everything moves to a steady state. Everything moves to a steady state and also in a fairly quick way, right? Yeah. So if we think of the transient that we saw before, some components were quite quick to stably oscillate, but here uh, it's uh, on a much better time scale where we can actually see that these things adapt to uh, the steady state level. Why is that important? Because steady state levels are the things that we can measure. Right? This yeah. is what we then go feedback to the experimentalists. We say, tell me just how much of NADH, if you have uh, the, the spectrophotometer and you have 300 nanometers in, in, the, uh, in the density or something, and then you look at some wavelength and you can see, aha, that, that tells me how much NADH is there. So previously it would have predicted at low flow rates that this would oscillate, but if we have sufficiently high flow rates, it means a sufficient amount of nutrient coming in, then this will not uh, oscillate anymore, but adjust to a stable steady state level. Okay. Okay. So there's, of course, many, many things that we can say about this environment, but we want to move forward, want to close with this session and as I said, the most important thing in these environments is not so much to listen to somebody telling you, but to take it from an initial point where something is running and then work your way through the options that are there, use the help that is provided by MATLAB and try to find ways to uh, become more fluent in using them.
final comment, um, a nice feature of this symbology environment is apart from things like metabolic or signaling networks, it has also good um, functionalities to doing PKPD simulations. So if you have some interest in pharmacological questions, uh, toxicological questions, variability in terms of patient variability, if you give a drug, your drug administration and so on, it's all provided there for your convenience. I've got a question. Is there a way to look at what the um, model looks like? The di a diagram of the... Um, yes, we might take a look at the diagram. And you are now in the original uh, model environment. Um, if you want to take a look on the toolbar on the left side, there's the uh, menu under open. The very left side, it says yep. open. If you click and look at the windows, there's a number of options available there, and among others is the diagram. Okay. So the diagram offers you a way of looking at the network that you're actually modeling, right? The network produced in a way similar to what we did in the last session or what you did in the first uh, network session, namely setting up the nodes and connecting them with edges. So there's a couple of things. Uh, that you can see here. You have nodes not only connected by lines, but, uh, well, actually, which ones are the nodes? Do you know? Um, Maybe we should be slow. So the, so the sort of more rectangular ones look like they're the chemical species, and the um, circles look like they're the reactions. Right. So we have something in addition to what we did uh, with the biograph uh, two weeks ago. We have the reactions or the connectivity specified. So you can actually look at what a certain connection means in terms of interactions. Namely, if you hover over one of the yellow circles in the bottom left corner of that window, you will see the reaction actually displayed. So the one specifically that we have highlighted here by hovering with the mouse over it is GAP, glyceraldehyde phosphate plus NAD, so the oxidized form uh, react, reacting to DPG plus NADH, the reduced form of that moiety. So it tells you what the reaction is, namely it specifies the interaction more concretely as compared to the biograph displayed in the last session. And if you hover over one of the metabolites, Say, for example, that in the glyceraldehyde phosphate, here you have it uh, also in the same place where we had it before for the reaction. If you hover over the nodes, rather than it, over the nodes, it will tell you what species it is. But of course, you need to have a little bit of biochemical knowledge, in this case of the metabolites of the glycolytic pathway. But if you are familiar with what you are modeling, then that should be trivial to go with it. And there's a lot of things that you can do. Uh, Rob has already shown you that by using the mouse, clicking on either node or reaction, you can actually pull them around and rearrange them if you want. So if you think something is not quite nicely visible, if there's a bit of a jam there, you can pull these things out and make it a bit more clearer who belongs to who and who is maybe more of a hub. You can see in the left-hand side, ADP seems to be a hub. It's connected to many things. And who is sort of a loner, uh, maybe just uh, being involved in a single process or only two processes, like in this case, the phosphate, the inorganic phosphate. Right. Okay. We leave it for you to explore further, but you can see uh, model display, access to all quantitative information in that model, uh, network diagram, simulation, and changing simulations under many different conditions. Is there just a mouse click away?